today we're going to talk about building O-scale turnouts using the Fast Tracks jigs. I'm going to give you some tips and techniques I've developed for working with these particular tools. However, I want to say right up front, this video is not designed to replace the videos on the Fast Tracks website. You really need to look at those videos and understand the process step by step. Uh, to be able to build a turnout with their tools. All I'm going to do is talk about some some tips and techniques which are almost unique to the O-Scale tools themselves. What you see on my workbench here are the tools I've gathered to do the job, uh, not the least of which are all the Fast Tracks tools. Here are, is the, uh, the point form tool that forms switch points and frog points. Here's the stockade tool that's used to form uh, the stock rails and of course the turnout jig itself. Now unlike the HO jigs where you have a left hand and a right hand turnout uh, totally separate on the piece of aluminum, the uh, O scale jig, this is a number six, interleaves the right hand turnout and the left hand turnout creating this jumble of lines at the far end and this works but you just have to be very, very careful as you uh, trace out each line to make sure that you're using the right lines. Uh, next most important after the tools themselves are an assortment of files here that I've, I've collected to get this job done. And we'll talk about those in a moment. And of course, the file card. Uh, this is your file cleaning brush, sometimes called a file card. This is very important because unlike the HO, uh, turnouts. In O scale there is a lot of material to move in filing down the rail and you'll be cleaning your files frequently. If not, your job is going to be a whole lot tougher. I also have my NMRA gauge. Even though the turnout fixtures uh, make a turnout that's fully NMRA compliant, I use my gauge for a number of things, checking that I'm getting it right, setting the clearance at the points, and of course in the end I have a uh, a truck here to run through the turnout to test it. Um, so that's it. Let's get started. After the uh, Fast Tracks tools themselves, the most important things you're going to have are files. And uh, this file I bought at uh, Lowe's, and I thought, wow, this is great. It's a, a single cut file on one side, a double cut file on the other. It can do the whole job. This was the Lowe's Cobalt brand, and it's uh, made in China. Well, after building my first turnout with this thing, I got about halfway through and said, nah, this isn't really working out. Um, this is not a good quality tool, and one thing you will absolutely want are quality files to get the job done. So I went down into the basement and reused my old... Um, Nicholson files and now I've gone out and bought some new ones. These are 10 inch Nicholson files. Uh, these are American made files and they're much higher quality. Uh, this is a double cut uh, mill bastard and this is a single cut mill bastard. The double cut mill bastard will remove material quickly but it tends to catch on the work and uh, it leaves a rougher finish. So after you've taken off material with the double cut file, switch to the single cut file uh, it runs much more smoothly across the work, especially across uh, thin rail like we have, and uh, it will leave a much smoother finish. I use this 8-inch um, single cut file for the final finishing if I want a really uh, higher level of finish on something because the, um, it's a finer tooth file than the 10-inch file. And then a small triangular file. This, this isn't necessarily a tool you have to go out and spend a lot of money on. This is just used for cutting the um, gaps in the PC board ties. And as I said in the introduction, make sure you have some way to clean your file. Uh, you should clean your files very, very frequently when doing this type of work. Cleaning every 20 strokes is not unreasonable. Uh, the files will load up very quickly and then once they're loaded they're going to skate over the work rather than uh, engaging the work and biting into it. So clean your files frequently if you want to make uh, rapid progress. On embarking on uh, building some turnouts with the Fast Tracks fixtures I went down to the Home Depot to see what I could find in the way of solder and fluxes. Uh, Fast Tracks recommends an acid core, an acid flux 
uh, to use with the um, fixtures but I went to Home Depot and Lowe's and Acid Flux was nowhere to be found but I did find this uh, it's called Oatly number no. 95 lead free tinning flux and uh, this is is um, works out very very well uh, for using with the fast tracks jigs, uh, jigs it's tinning in that it doesn't just flux the surface but it leaves behind the tinning compound which I believe in this particular case is largely bismuth because it is lead free um, but it acts just like uh, any good flux it melts readily it wets the surface and once the surface is wet the solder will flow onto the wetted surface also at Home Depot I found this um, it's called metal working solder but if you read the fine print here it says it's a silver bearing solder so if you're concerned about um, lead exposure you're going to be making a lot of turnouts you can get this use it with the tinning flux and uh, it will um, it will uh, reduce your lead exposure I also use this even though I'm not concerned about lead exposure I use this at various points on the turnout uh, especially the points because uh, on the fast tracks website they say that the points are the item most likely to uh, to fail on their turnouts and of course this is just regular old 6040 uh, lead tin lead uh, solder um, that I use everywhere else on the layout now to handle the silver solder which has a higher melting temperature and to handle the larger rail code 148 rail that I'm using I had to go out and get a 40 watt uh, soldering iron now this is also from Home Depot it's a 40 watt Weller soldering iron it has this uh, chisel point tip right here which is actually quite dirty right now let me uh, let me clean this off has a t chisel point tip here which works well uh, we have larger rail and it's a larger jig you don't have to use the very very fine point like you see uh, them using on the fast tracks website this will readily melt and heat the rail and the PC ties for use with tin lead solder and it's it's just adequate to do with the silver solder but it does work uh, the silver solder doesn't flow as readily but it, it doesn't uh, turn into a putty so I found that I did my first turnout with uh, a 30 watt iron as recommended by Fast Tracks but with the larger O scale rail I found that uh, it didn't do an adequate job so I went out and got a 40 watt iron so those are the um, the additional tools and materials that I think will be helpful in working in O scale and by the way, this uh, little tool came with the uh, the soldering iron, and it's uh, non-heat conductive. It's plastic. It's really great for holding down rail. Uh, pointed end here allows you to pick the PC board ties out of the fixture. This was a uh, unexpected bonus of um, of uh, buying some additional tools to get this job done. So let's uh, let's get into the tips and techniques for working with the O scale fast tracks fixtures okay um, we're going to be, begin to make a frog point here and I'm going to show you a couple of tips that uh, aren't really found in the um, fast tracks video first when you take your piece of rail that you're going to use to make the frog point I square off the back end of the rail uh, as it's going to join the uh, the flex track or the hand leg track or whatever you're going to use I square this off in advance because once the frog point is made you don't want to be filing on the back end of those two pieces of rail so now the second thing is we load this into the fast track jig exactly as shown in uh, Tim Morris's video um, what you need to do is make sure that the end of your rail extends past this machined indentation in the jig so you want that past that end and once you're there you can snug these up now um, and then snug them up with the uh, with the allen wrench you don't have to really wail on these just get them tight so that the rail isn't going to slip now in the fast tracks video it shows Tim passing the file a few times 
uh, three or four times and the uh, frog, uh, frog point is done. Well, um, he's using, I went back and looked, he's using code 70 rail and you may be able to file away the code 70 rail in a few passes. But this is code 148 rail for O scale and uh, there's a lot of material to remove here. You're going to have to remove this rail flush to the jig. Let me see if I can turn this edgewise uh, to the camera. You can see how much material is protruding here that has to be filed away. That's not going to be uh, a few swipes of the file. When you do this, uh, as Tim does in the video, start at this end of the fixture and swipe your file forward so that you're riding up on the rail and m removing material. Um, you are going to mung up the face of the of the jig. There's no way around it. I tried all sorts of contortions to uh, avoid messing up the face of the jig. It was such a nicely machined piece of material, um, but uh, that just took so much time that it, it do doesn't make sense. You're going to lose the advantage of the fast track jigs. So work from this direction forward as Tim shows in the in the video. You are going to scratch up the face of the tool but um, that's just the, the um, nature of the situation. Um, start with your double cut file. It removes material faster and as this thing starts to wear away and get within a f um, oh, maybe five or ten thousand to the face of the jig, then switch to your single cut file and uh, do the smoothing operation. One last point, you may be able to see here at the heel of the jig I've gotten a little uh, rust spots. I just started using this jig for the first time last week and didn't do anything when I put it away and there's some fine rust spots on here. So um, when you're done with your jigs, whatever uh, preservative Fast Tracks puts on there, you've worn it away. So make sure you put some WD-40 or some light oil or some other preservative on the face of your tool so that it doesn't get rusty. One final comment on cutting on uh, filing your points. You want to cut in this direction only. You do not want to have the file in contact with the material when you pull the backstroke. Okay, so cut in the direction from the back of the fixture forward, then lift your file return it and repeat. Do not try to pull back and, and with a sawing motion with the file. The reason for that is as this point gets thinner and thinner and thinner the chances of your catching it with the file on the backstroke and bending the point and ruining the point and having to advance the material and start all over again gets very great. So last comment on filing the points is file in one direction only. File lift the file, remove, come back, and uh, you'll be successful. I'm going to make my points and we'll return and show us soldering them up in the jig. Okay, here is half of a frog point after it's been filed away. Uh, I want to show you exactly how much of the base of the rail, the head of the rail, and the web of the rail has been removed. And I'll try and put a picture in picture of this um, when I do the video editing. But you're going to be removing a lot of material and as I said this isn't just going to be a few strokes of the file. But there's one other thing uh, you should note about the uh, frog points and the regular points as made in the uh, Fast Tracks jig. So I'm going to take this frog point out. The, uh, let's see if you can see this. Let me move the jig out of the way so it's not conflicting. The web of the rail is almost going to be paper thin when this is done. Let me turn this to the camera. It's going to be exceedingly thin. It's going to be paper thin. Now what I found is for the frog points, because there will be two of these and you're going to fill them with solder in between, uh, this is okay. One of the things that makes the fast track jig work properly, the fast track jig for turnouts work properly, is that uh, the frog point has to come down to as much of a fine point as you can conceivably make it. 
So getting that fine point onto the frog is very important. And since you'll have two halves of these, they'll be soldered together, it will have sufficient structural strength. On the other hand, for the switch points, I sometimes cut back that paper-thin part uh, to give it more structural strength because it's constantly going to be hit uh, by, by wheel flanges as they pass. But uh, for the frog points, this is okay. Now we're going to solder the points and uh, the frog, I'm sorry, and we have to deal with this jumble of lines inside of the uh, Fast Tracks jig. Um, the best thing I have found is to use your finger to trace out where the various components go. Uh, however, the frog, uh, frog points are right here in the middle of this, uh, of this jumble and it's a little difficult, but you can eventually get it right. Now I have the points here. They're preformed and maybe you can see it or not. I've added some of flux to the mating surface of each point. So this point, the right hand point, goes in here. And there is a certain amount of slide here I can do with this particular piece of rail. Let me uh, move my fat hands out of the way so that you can see that this can be slid fore and aft. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm right-handed and there's no other way to set this up uh, to video except uh, this way and it's going to uh, have my hands partially blocking what you need to see. So now I have both pieces of rail in here and the trick is, let me move this flux out of the way here, the trick is to slide these forward in the jig until they both meet in a nice pointy uh, point and I make it a habit after doing one or two of these that didn't turn out quite as well as I like to make sure that these two pieces are as far push this far in towards the closure rails as the jig will allow and if you do this uh, it will it will produce some nice switch points for you. So make sure that the rail, let me do this left-handed, make sure that the rail is sitting flat into the jig, that this rail is pushed as far forward as the jig fi as the fixture will allow. Okay, now we're going to solder. I have fluxed this with the tinning flux, which I find works well. Uh, I am not going to uh, use the silver solder here because the silver solder requires more heat and the 40 watt iron is not going to heat these two rails sufficiently to uh, get them to, uh, to heat up to the melting point of silver solder. So I'm going to use regular, regular tin lead solder here. Now I've uh, just cleaned my, my soldering iron and I'm going to apply the heat right now and I again I apologize that this may not uh, this may not look well because I'm right-handed the flux sizzled and I start to apply the solder and let it wick into the joint bring that as far back as it will go and wick in I'm applying some more heat to make sure that it, it thoroughly wicks down into that joint. Applying some downward pressure. This tool that I got with the, uh, with the soldering iron can come in very handy for holding that. Withdrawing the iron now. Putting it back in its holder. Going to give it a few seconds for the uh, points to be absolutely solid. Now we take this out of the fixture and there are your um, frog points. Now I'm going to clean these up and get a close-up view of what these look like. Now I'm going to uh, do, the, do a stock rail. So I have a piece of rail here in the jig, 
uh, I'm making a right hand turn out so this is uh, the straight stock rail I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the video but I've marked the inside of the rail where the base of the rail and the head of the rail is going to be uh, removed so now that I have this marked to remove the rail from here base of the rail rather from here to here uh, I'm going to move to the stockade tool set it up and uh, take that that base of that rail away the um, stockade tool and here it is stockade uh, is a really really handy tool um, to hold the stock rail and remove just the base of the rail uh, with a, a vise or holding it by hand is just real real drudgery but in addition to the purpose for which it was designed a stockade tool can be very handy for another couple of things which I'm going to talk about right now so you load the uh, the rail into the tool head down and uh, then you cinch these up cinch up the uh, Allen nuts now putting a little bit of rail sticking out like this and uh, using this as a holding tool to file or sand that end of the rail flat and square is just extremely handy uh, again you don't have to try to hold on to this small to the rail with the small cross section as a holding tool for bringing this up against a file or a grinding wheel or a sanding belt uh, to square off the end of that rail it's just it's just ultra handy it'll be worth the cost of the tool just for that alone but of course it's the tool you use to create stock rails and so let's do that now you enter the stock rail from one side or the other of this tool depending on which uh, base of the rail you have to remove that is which stock rail this is the left or the right stock rail and if I'm just a little bit less clumsy here I can put the rail in from this side and move in to where I have my purple magic marker which is the the part of the base of the rail that I'm going to remove and then snug this down just like we do with all of the of the rail manipulation tools from fast tracks so now again just like with the point tool you're going to sand a uh, file away everything that's in this opening on the tool and again um, working from this part of the tool up with the file and cutting only on the push stroke not back on the pull stroke cut only on the push stroke of the file and uh, this is going to take quite a bit of time to wear away to file away the base of that rail so just uh, just like Tim shows a few swipes on his code 70 uh, it's going to take more than a few swipes uh, with code 148 start with your uh, double cut file and then as most of the rail is, is um, uh, filed away you can switch to a single cut file uh, for a smooth smooth finish I'm going to go and uh, take this stock rail down and then when I have the two stock rails done uh, we will demonstrate the uh, soldering of the of the rails to PC ties in the fixture alright I hope you'll be able to see now that the base of the rail has been removed uh, this is about as close as I can get my video camera to focus so this is now about flush with the uh, with the fixture so the base of the rail and even a little bit ahead of the rail I guess has been moved away however um, we're not done yet and I should have remembered this when I did the previous segment um, these tools are sized obviously for HO and smaller maybe they also are sized for S I don't know but um, the import parts of the rail that I marked to be removed don't all fit into the opening in this fixture all at once so there is still a little bit of material here about that much that still needs to be removed so we're going to go back uh, remove this second you know slide the uh, rail in the in the fixture snug it down and then we're going to go back and uh, remove the additional rail base of the rail that we need to 
uh, to finish up this stock rail. Now one other thing I didn't mention in the previous segment is with both the stock aid and the point form tool it'll probably be easier if you can clamp these in a vise while you're doing the the filing. You can do it by hand but if you have a three or a four inch vise that you can clamp these into you may want to use uh, something to protect the finish on the the tool itself like maybe a couple of strips of uh, cork road bed between the vise jaws and the tool will keep it from getting uh, chewed up but you probably if you can hold this in a nice sturdy bench vise as you're doing the uh, filing again not needed maybe with uh, HO code 70 rail but definitely uh, a handy thing to do when you're filing code 148 okay we're going to begin soldering the stock rails here and uh, here I am going to use the silver solder this is the straight stock rail and make sure when you put it in place that the uh, cutout made with the stockade tool is opposite where the points will fit in so this is all set to go before I put the rail down I put a small dab of the um, tinning flux on each tie and uh, so therefore these are all set to go uh, I have my uh, soldering iron here I'm just going to clean the tip momentarily so we get a nice good solder joint on the first um, uh, joint I'm putting the uh, soldering iron at the base of the rail the flux has sizzled I'm now adding a little dab of the silver solder and I'm going to pull this away while my hand uh, to the left here is uh, holding the um, the rail down so that joint has solidified up now characteristic of the um, silver solder which is what I'm using here I'm using the silver solder uh, is that the minute you take this 40 watt iron away it solidifies pretty quickly which tells me that the 40 watt iron has barely enough heat to make the joint but make the joint it does so now we're going to do this one next door um, again I'm applying heat to the base of the rail and the tie touching in a little bit of solder uh, holding the rail down so it's firmly down into the fixture as I pull the iron away and that uh, joint solidifies essentially immediately I'm going to lift these out of the fixture and show you that this is a nice strong joint I can push on it nothing's going to happen to it so that's doing the stock rail I'll continue on put this back in the fixture continue doing all of the stock rails uh, all the way around now one last thought as in this tie here uh, let me do this from the left this tie here also has the guard rail on the other side so in those cases solder from the outside only don't solder both sides but you should know that from Tim Morris's Tim Morris's video okay now we're going to do the points on the closure rail as you can see I have one uh, one closure rail already in place and the points are formed on it and I have another piece of rail here to make the second closure rail um, with its points to do that we're going to use the point form tool again um, insert the rail from the end called point and there are two sides to this to make the two handedness of the point rails I've already marked this rail where the material has to be removed and uh, I now have it in the jig extended it past the end of the machined pocket in the point form tool I'm going to snug these up I'm going to take this off to um, to uh, shape it and when I come back I'm going to show you the very very thin edge that this uh, tool produces and how it's my uh, practice to cut it back uh, to get rid of the paper thin edge and uh, then I'll mark the whole uh, closure rail and uh, bend the guard the wing rails and everything else uh, once I've uh, finished the point now I finished uh, forming this point with the uh, point form tool you can see let's see if I can bring this in a little closer to the camera you can see how much material has been removed there's quite a bit of material removed from the base the head and the web of the rail 
Now the other thing that this does, it leaves the uh, point here of almost paper thin. Effectively it is paper thin. So I'm going to take this out of the jig. So you can get a better look at this uh, this um, this edge. This one isn't too bad. Um, many of them really, really do come out paper, paper thin, but I'm getting a little bit better on forming these. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, you certainly won't be able to see it in the video. I will uh, take a picture of this. Um, the web is paper thin and it's separating from the base of the rail. And obviously over time and being hit by uh, wheels and flanges as those come in. Let me see. Maybe I can get in closer. Maybe you can see this. Let me take this in until the video camera won't focus anymore. That's probably as close as it's going to go. Let me come out so you have some good focus. Um, rotate this in front of the camera and against the backdrop of the of the uh, jig. You can see how thin that edge is and it's actually starting the web is separating from the base of the rail. So what I typically do is I cut this back just with the nippers, cut it off square to the point where you have good solid contact between the base of the rail, the web, and the head. Um, it's probably a little bit blunter than uh, Fast Tracks would like it, but I believe that over time it will be more durable being pounded by the, uh, the wheels and flanges as they go by. So that's the, uh, how to form the points, and uh, we'll just probably have a wrap-up as part of the next segment. Alright, here's the completed turnout. I've put it back in the fixture, although I've had it out. I've cleaned up uh, uh, excess solder, filed everything smooth, um, put it under running water, and scrubbed it with a stainless steel brush per uh, Tim Morris's techniques that uh, he has on the Fast Tracks website. I just brought it back here to show that a, um, a truck runs quite smoothly through both uh, roots through the turnout. Um, it's quite sturdy. Uh, I've used the silver solder on a few of the a few of the ties and especially on the points so that the points are uh, very very strong. Uh, on the Fast Tracks website they say the points are the most likely thing to break away so that's where on the places I use the silver solder. Uh, you can use a silver solder everywhere if you are concerned about uh, doing a lot of lead exposure. Uh, when you're done, remember to um, put some <clears throat> WD-40 or such like if you're done with your point form tool and your stockade tool. Also, remember to clean your aluminum uh, fast tracks fixture. Uh, I know unless you're a whole lot neater uh, in soldering than I am, you're going to have some remnants of uh, flux on the fixture itself. And whether it's acid flux or this tinning flux, you probably don't want to leave it on there as it will eat into the aluminum. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I want to say once more, I'm not trying to come up with a video that replaces the Fast Tracks video, but just showing you uh, a couple of techniques that I've used uh, to um, account for the idiosyncrasies of the O-scale fixtures and some techniques that I've worked out in building a few of these that work out well uh, like this tinning flux uh, because uh, I could not find acid, acid flux at the uh, local Home Depot. Well, I hope you have enjoyed it.